hope our channel is being useful to the viewers to understand the human medical science. The model here will help you understand the layers of the tissue in a human head. The layers in the head in sequence from outside to inside starts with the scalp followed by the skull or cranium. Next, the meninges and the deeper brain parenchyma. Scalp has for the layers best remembered by the mnemonic scalp. That is S for skin, C for connective tissue, A for aponeurosis, L for loose eola connective tissue and P for periosteum. In the scalp, the skin contains numerous hair follicles and subaqueous glands. The deeper dense connective tissue with fat followed by the epicranial aponeurosis which is a thin tendon like structure that connects the occipitalis and frontalis muscles. Further deep, there is, a there is the loose eola connective tissue. The outer layer of the skull bone is the periosteum. It becomes continuous with the endosteum at the suture lines. Here you can now visualize the skull bone or cranium. The meninges has three membranous coverings that lay between the bony skull and the actual brain tissue. These membranes in order from outside to inside are the biliary, periosteal and meningeal dura mater, arachnoid mater and the pi mater respectively. The skull bone or cranium is made up of the outer table diploid and the inner table. There are emissary veins piercing the bone with their diploic extensions within the diploid. The emissary veins connect the veins of the scalp to the diploid veins and intracranial venous sinuses. Here, you can see an emissary vein draining intracranially into the superior sagittal sinus. Also, you can for the time being observe small projections of the arachnoid mater into the dural sinuses, known as arachnoid granulations, which allow subarachnoid CSF to re-enter the circulation via the dural venous sinuses. Meninges formed by the three membranous coverings has the epidural space outside the dura mater, subdural space beneath the biliary periosteal and meningeal dura mater, and subarachnoid space between the arachnoid mater and the pia mater respectively. There is a trabecular structure of connections between the arachnoid and the pia that bridges the subarachnoid space which is otherwise full of circulating CSF. This is a quick overview of all the layers. White mater, Grey matter, the pyometer, the arachnoid matter, meningeal and periosteal dura matter, the skull bone with deploy diploic space and vein, here the periosteum and the loose areolar tissue, gala aponeurosis, subcutaneous fat and skin respectively. The inner layer meningeal dura mater lines the inside of this entire skull and creates little folds on the brain surface. It is continuous with the dura mater of the spinal cord. Two such special folds are called the fax or the tentor and the tentorium. The fax separates the right and left half of the brain and the tentorium separates the upper and lower parts of the brain. Two additional folds are called fax cerebelli separates the right and left cerebral hemispheres and the diaphragmatic cellae covers the hypophysial fossa and the sphena of the sphenoid bone. It contains a small opening for the passage of the stalk of the pituitary gland. I would like to add some additional important information here. The brain is the best protected organ in the body with multiple layers of protection starting with the skull or cranium which acts as armor shielding the brain from blows. Next is the meninges that prevents damage by contact with the inside of the skull. Finally, the cerebrospinal fluid acts as a cushion in which the brain and the spinal cord basically float in. The dura, like the scalp, is supplied by both cranial, chiefly the tri trigeminal and cervical nerves. The brain itself is normally insensitive and headaches are commonly either of vascular, intracranial 
or extracranial of dural origin. The term leptomeninges include the arachnoid and pyometer. The arachnoid mater is a thin and delicate membrane that surrounds the brain loosely and is separable from the dura by a potential space into which the subdural hemorrhage may occur. It consists of layers of connective tissue, is a vascular and does not receive any innervation. The arachnoid dips into the longitudinal interhemispheric fissure but not into the cell side. The pyometer adheres intimately to the surface of the brain and spinal cord. It follows the brain into the gyri of the cerebral hemispheres and the folia of the cerebellum. It is the only covering to follow the contours of the brain, the gyri and the fissures.